This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Doyle Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering globally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to Scripture, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scripture. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the broken hearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. Thank God. The word is not thee. Even in your heart, in your mouth, is the word of faith which I preach. You will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God under salvation and what I believe in, that the Jew verse and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by his I want to welcome everyone to this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple, television, YouTube, and shortwave radio. Well, it's nice to be speaking by Apple television to China. Thank God. What a blessing that is. You see, I lived in Japan for 27 months. I know something about the Asian people. And it's a blessing for us to be there on television three times a week on Apple television. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God. We're going to have some songs couple by the congregation and then Terry Brown will be a recorded song God on the Mountain and after that I will speak let's worship God no
Life is easy when you're up on the mountain and you've got peace of mind like you've never known. But then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for your next. When you're up on the mountain and your talk comes so easy, well, I've said it's best, but it's down in the valley of trials and temptation. That's when your faith is really put to the test. For the God on the mountain, He's still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. And the God of the good times, He's still God in the bad times. The God of the day is still God. Yes, you talk of faith when you're up on your mountain and your talk comes so easy. Life said it's best, but it's down in that valley of trials and temptation. That's when your faith is really put to the test for the God on the McKinney, Collin County, where I'm at right now, I was at breakfast in Bethlehem. In 1970, God changed my life. And I started obeying again. In 
Number 70, 73, maybe. Maybe four. God shows me two. Single stem, spindly, roses, big. A vision. I said, and what's that? God said, that is you and Betty. I have sent you to a dry, parched land. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, God says, is dry, parched. Man, no attention to God. Well, I'm still here. And I'm not going anywhere. No, I'm still here. Thank God. God opposed me. I want to talk tonight about my life and about my daughter and my granddaughter's life and great-granddaughter. Amen? Paul Peters is going to read Psalm 112 for you and me. Paul? Psalm 112. Praise thee the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright there rises light in the darkness, he is gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he should not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He should not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He should not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. I thank you, Paul. As far as I know, I live just like Psalm 112. And I have for many years. And I know no part of Psalm 112 that I fell short in, that I fear the Lord, I trust the Lord all the time for everything I do. And I have since 1970, I know what Psalm 112 says. I know what it says about a person that will live in it. They'll have to do what? Keep God's commandments. Fear God and keep his commandments to live in it. I can read, I sold a lucrative veterinary hospital in practice in 1970, and I wasn't going to miss what God had planned for me. I was not silly enough to walk away from what I walked away from and not expect God to reward me. I marvel at people that thought I was some nut. Because I said, if you think I serve God without receiving or wanting to receive rewards, you're silly. My God, why don't you work for nothing? Paul, would you read James 1, verse 12? Sure will. Hallelujah. Look. I am not some silly religious person. Didn't want to be, and I'm not. Paul Peter. James 1, verse 12. 
Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. There it is. That's what God promises. He promises you. That's a lot of things. But that one's good for me. In the meantime, I'm going to take everything he gives me. Blessings come upon me and overtake me. And I know that. I can honestly say, before God, in front of all the angels in heaven, and on earth, and the devil, and every religion is, I live in Psalm 112. That's why they can't bring me down. Now, Paul, I'd like me to read 1 Corinthians 12, 28, I think, for the end. All right. And God has said some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongue, tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of miracles? Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But covet earneth earnestly the best gifts. Yet shall I unto you a more excellent way. Amen. I have a daughter. The only daughter from my loins that I have, Kathy, my, Kathy, it was Kathy Davidson. Kathy Jane Davidson, born when I was on a ship on my way to Japan in 1953. And she has some faith. She can walk pretty well in the spirit in some things, real well. She moves in the gifts of the spirit. First Corinthians 12, 9 of them. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning the spirits, gift of faith, working of miracles, gifts of healings, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. Kathy by prophesied. She can prophesy. Give tongues and interpret the tongues. She is not a prophetess, but she prophesied. Paul, would you read about Philip's four daughters? Sure will. Acts chapter 21, starting in verse 8. And the next day we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Kathy Bye was a virgin, tongues, ter interpretation, and prophesying when she got married, age 25. My daughter, I know what I just said to be true. Her mother did the same. She knows what I said to be true. Yet, she's not just where she belongs in the Lord. She's my daughter. It says in Psalm 112, what does it say, Paul, that she will be my seed? His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Mighty upon the earth. That's a guarantee to Kathy Mike. Mighty upon the earth. Why? Because I lived and have lived for many years in Psalm 112. She's going to rise up and return to her dad's ministry. Her daughters and granddaughter, they are Terry Mize. Father and grandfather. 
But Kathy, my is my daughter. And what happens to, to the my girls and Shelby, the granddaughter, depends on where Terry Mine lived as he walked. And here, Terry Mine was an apostle, a minister of the gospel in power. By, through song, that was his greatest power, ministering song. He ministered with me for years. I know. Cherry cast out devils. They dance on the sick. I know that. Thank God. I'm telling you, God is the judge of Candace, Ashley, Rachel, and Shelby. I guess not Shelby. Casey Elvis is her mom. Thank God. So, I expect the Word of God to work where I live, where I walk. I expect it to work in every human being that will live in Psalm 112. Now, you can't live in Psalm 112 unless you walk in the Spirit of God, preaching the gospel, led by the Spirit living by faith, doing God's commandments, then you can do that. You won't get those promises otherwise. I just know, knew it was right for me to say all these things tonight about my daughter, granddaughters, and great-granddaughter. So you can believe it, you can watch it, but Kathy Bye will rejoin her dad's ministry. No man can stay the will of God. No man can stop Kathy Bye from returning to my walk with me in my ministry. Amen. We have a song coming up. Paul Peter regarding walk with me, Kathy Davidson. Then we'll be preaching, not Kathy Mai. That's another former Kathy Davidson. All right? Here we are, Paul Peter. Walk with me, walk with me. Lest mine eyes no longer see All the glory, all the story Of your love Talk to me, talk to me Like you did so tenderly When you walked there when you talk there by the sea. the 
John chapter 1. I'm going to share some things with you that, that I've learned over the years walking in this and walking with Doyle and especially in the last seven years. But I'm going to help clarify something. 1 John 1 and I'm going to begin in verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you look at this verse, there are two events that happen. Two separate things that happen. It says, if we confess our sins, so we have to confess our sins. He is faithful. Thank God he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So he will forgive us our sins. And then there's the word and. I was a third grade grammar teacher. And means there's a split. There's two different things. So he forgives our sins and then to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Those are two separate events. Amen. Go with me to Hebrews 10 where I was this morning. I'm going to begin in verse 12. We're going to look at the forgiveness of sins part. It says, but this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, this is Jesus. After he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down at the right hand of God. Do you see? He's, it says one sacrifice for sins. He paid for our sins. He made the sacrifice and all our sin was on that body. All of it. Everything we've done was on that body. One sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering... He has perfected forever them that are sanctified. One offering. He has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Isn't that amazing? By one offering, he has perfected. Do you know that people say, well, you can never be perfect? That's not in the Word of God. It is not in the Word of God. You can be perfect. You can be perfect. In fact, you're supposed to be perfect. All right, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, one, he went to the cross once. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is witness to us. After he said before, this is a covenant. I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. You cannot pay for your sins any more than Jesus paid for them. You know, that would be like going to a restaurant and somebody picking up your check and, and you paying for the check also. Let's pay double. Let's pay triple. No, your sins have been paid for. 
absolutely paid for. You have been forgiven if you confess your sins. Thank God. But then there's something more. There's something more. I have a, 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 uh, let's go on to the next one. Let's go to uh, John 15. How many times I heard these verses at Water of Life when David's in teaching? How many times would he tell us to turn to John 15? And you know, years go, John 15. I must, I must have the thing memorized. But you know the neat thing? It makes a lot more sense now than it ever did. I am the true vine, John 15. This is Jesus speaking because it's in red. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Now look, every branch in me. So that branch had to be in him. It wasn't a branch lying on the ground with no vine. This is a branch in him. Every branch in me, Jesus said, that beareth not fruit, he taketh it away. And every branch that beareth fruit, every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. He purges it. Whoopee! Ooh, goody, goody. I, 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 I have produced some fruit for the kingdom of God, and here comes the purging. Well, I didn't sign up for this. Well, thank God you're getting the purging. Thank God you're getting the purging. It says that not that taketh away every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Let's go back to 1 John 1, 9. Let's look at that again. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. He will forgive you of any sin and, and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You know what that word cleanse means? It means to purify. That word means to purify. To cleanse, to purify. You want another place where it talks about the... Um, well, let's go, let's go to the next one. Let's go to 1 John 1, 7. So now we have two different things. We have being forgiven of sin and we have being purged. Purged. Two totally different things. You know what the neat thing is? Your sins are forgiven. They have been paid for. You can't pay any more for your sins. So while you're walking through the purging, you're still forgiven. You are still forgiven. I have a, a cute little example of this. We had a, a cat, and, and the cat's name was Not So. My, my family's name was Small, so it was Not So Small. So Not So had a, had a, a lust for socks. Everybody socks. If you left your socks out, not so, would come get your socks, and they would disappear. All right? So, not so, the cat had a lust for socks. He takes his sock. He goes and hides it. He comes back. He looks at me. I give him the look. He gives me this look like, oh, forgive me. I didn't mean to do it. You know what? Not so is forgiven. But you still got some socks missing. And you're still going to have socks missing tomorrow. So not so is forgiven for taking the sock. But you got to get rid of the thing in not so that likes the socks. And if you get rid of the thing in not so that likes the socks, your socks aren't going to disappear. Your socks aren't going to disappear. That's the difference between forgiveness and purging. Forgiveness, it's forgiven. It's taken off the books. It is not put to you. You are forgiven. But the purging gets rid of the reason you do it in the first place. You know what? Purging is not fun. Purging is not fun. I've, I've described it to Doyle. I don't know. Some of you probably have not, because of my age, have been around a ringer washing machine. Have you ever seen your grandmother put the clothes through a ringer washing machine? It hurts the clothes. It squeezes the clothes. It squeezes every little bit of liquid out of the clothes. Kind of like purging. But purging is necessary. It gets rid of the reason you're doing the sin in the first place. Thank God there's a purging. And how is it done? Let's go to 1 John 7, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light... 
If we walk in the light as he is in the light, don't go there, but I'm going to show you what walking in the light is. It is 2 Corinthians 4, 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light, the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So when we walk in the light, we're walking in the gospel. We're walking in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We are walking in that Jesus bore our sin on the tree. We are walking in that Jesus bore our our, our pains, our sicknesses, our healings, our poverty, everything, our peace on the tree, and that he died, and then he was buried, and that God saw the travail of Jesus' soul after three days. He was satisfied with Jesus' sacrifice, and he raised Jesus from the dead, forgiving every sin, forgiving your sin. Now we got to get you purged. Now we got to get the reasons you want to do the sin in the first place out. That is purging. But if we walk in the light, in the gospel, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us. You know what that word is? Purify. Purify. Purge us from all sin. That's the difference between forgiveness and purging. Now, go with me to Hebrews 9. Same word. Same word. How much more? Hebrews 9, 14. How much more? How much more shall the blood of Christ? You know what's something wild about this, folks? Ten commandments can't do this. The ten commandments cannot purge you. The Ten Commandments cannot take that thing out of you that makes you do what you do that you don't like to do. That's Romans 7 in a nutshell. Roman, yeah, Romans 7. That thing you don't like to do is in you and purging will get it out and you won't have that in you any longer. You won't even have the desire to do that. I have been purged of several things and the desires are gone. The desires that I used to have are gone. They're not even there anymore. You know what a wonderful release that is? You know what a wonderful comfort that is, knowing that if you're stuck in that situation, the, the, the desire is not even there to do the sin. I mean, if, you, if you're in sin, you ask forgiveness, and you are forgiven. There is no more sacrifice for your sin. But let God purge you. Let God purge you. Give yourself to God. Believe that gospel. As you walk in that gospel, God will lead you. That's the neat thing. As you walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus will purge you, purify you, cleanse you of all that sin. Now, as how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God? There's that forgiveness again. There's that Jesus putting himself on the tree, and he did it willingly. He did it willingly for you. He wants you to be purged. He wants you to be clean. He wants you to be justified. He wants your redemption. He wants your justification. He wants that for you. Why did he go to the cross if he didn't want it for you? All right? He said, offered himself without spot to God. Purge. Same word as cleanse. Same word as purify. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Why purge? To serve the living God. Finish with me in 2 Timothy 2. Why do we go through the purging? Why do we go through the purging? I mean, have you ever been um, in a situation where your guts are just in a twist and it's like your body saying, and, and I know people laugh when I say that, but, but your whole body's saying, everybody out of the pool. I mean, things want to go out everywhere. That's kind of like what purging is. It's difficult. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it hurts a lot. But what you got when you're finished? Let's see. 2 Timothy 2. Nevertheless, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God stand assured, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. 
and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If you call yourself a Christian and you're still in sin, you got to do everything you can to stop it. You got to go to God and say, I got to stop this. You know, it's amazing. Jesus said to two people, he said, uh, go and sin no more. I don't know where we got people have been have taught that don't worry, God knows you're in sin. Well, then why did Jesus say, go no, and sin no more? The man's trying to save you. Okay, verse 20. But in the great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Now, 21 is what I want. If a man therefore purge, there's that word again, purge. If a man therefore purge himself from these, purge himself by the work of the blood, by walking in the light of the gospel, believing what the blood of Jesus does for you. When a man therefore purges himself from these, what happens to him? He becomes a vessel unto honor, sacrifice, meat, useful. That word mean, meat means useful. It means profitable. And me, useful for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Do you see why God purges us? So he can use us. So he can use us. You know, you can't walk in the gospel and minister to God's people if you got stuff in you that when you come in against a situation that you go right to it. No, we've got to be purged from these we got to be purged from the things that cause us to do the sins in the first place. And it's done by walking in the gospel and in the blood of Jesus. And when you are finished, when you are done, and well, actually, you will never be done. You will never be done. The work of a sanctification is an ongoing process, and it goes on until you go to be with God. But you will be used. You will be able to be used by the Father. You'll be able to be used by Jesus. And as it says, I think in Corinthians, it says there will be a day when you will look and you will see Jesus eye to eye and you will see as he is, so are you. So are you. You will be just like your master. We have some time left. Let's have some worship. And while we're doing this, Let's let God do some purging.
We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson. Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.